that other online, so because uh, it's a secret. All right, we're going to the book of Acts tonight. Just as soon as Clarence gives me a green light, you could. I'm sorry, you're going to go to the book of. Uh, well, go with me to Acts first. We'll go to Acts 20, and then we'll go back over to Chronicles. I'll give you time to get there. But we're going to look at a little thought this evening that will be a help and encouragement to you. And I want to share that with us tonight. <clears throat> we'll talk about giving a little bit. Usually that causes folks to get tight. Uh, causes folks to cramp up a little bit. But I'm going to show you a few things in the Scripture tonight about the joy of giving. So we're going to look at that. Uh, read a little article this afternoon. It says, uh, talking about giving, it says if you have little children or if you've been around little children, you've seen the scene a dozen times. The older child gets a toy, perhaps a special little truck he loves to play with. In fact, he plays with it till he wears the, all the paint off of it. One day, it's sitting on the coffee table, nobody's touching it, along comes little sister, who toddles up to the table and reaches her hand over the well-worn truck, only to have it snatched away by the gorilla in the family. It's my truck. He doesn't want to part with something that important. How many of us parents have looked at the older child and said, let her play with it, and had the older child to say of course here sis not doesn't usually go that way does it usually it's nice nah, mine mine and you just have to break his arms to get the truck out of his hand he doesn't want to give it up and your compulsion makes him grip it tighter this is an illustration of giving grudgingly yet the remarkable thing is that the standard approach in fundraising is causing people to feel forced. You see, compulsion results in reluctance. When you are compelled to do something, you are all the more reluctant to give it up. It's a matter of the heart. We're going to talk about giving just a little bit tonight. In Acts chapter number 20, verse 17 will be our starting point. Father, I pray you'll help us tonight as we look to thy word. Pray you'll lead us and guide us, forgive us, cleanse us, and purge us of all our sin. Lord, let nothing be in our mind, hearts, or soul that would hinder you from working in the way that's most pleasing to you tonight. Strengthen your believers, save the lost. We'll give you the praise for it all. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, Acts chapter 20, beginning at verse number 17, we're going to see... Paul's last address to the church of Ephesus. Now you know Paul had much uh, involved and invested in the church at Ephesus. Later, young Timothy goes there. We believe young Timothy uh, to be the pastor of the church of Ephesus. Here, Paul, as he leaves out, verse 17 says, And from Miletus, uh, he sent to Ephesus and called the elders of the church. And when they were come to him, he said unto them, You know... From the first day that I came into Asia, after what manner I have been with you all at all seasons, serving the Lord with all humility of mind, and with many tears and temptations, which befell me by the lying in wait of the Jews, and how often I have kept back nothing that was profitable unto you but have showed you and have taught you publicly and from house to house, testifying both to the Greeks and also uh, to the Jews and also to the Greeks, repentance towards God and faith towards our Lord Jesus, our Lord Jesus Christ. And now, behold, I, I go bound in the Spirit unto Jerusalem, not all knowing the things that shall befall me there. Say that the Holy Ghost witnessed me in every city, saying that bonds and afflictions abide me. But nothing of these things moved me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy. And the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus Christ to testify of the gospel of, of the grace of God, and now, behold, I know that ye all 
among whom I have gone preaching the, the kingdom of God shall see my face no more. Wherefore I take you to record this day that I am pure from the blood of all men. For I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God which he hath purchased with his own blood. For I know this that after the departing uh, after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you and not spare the flock. Also of your own selves shall men arise speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. Therefore watch and remember that by the space of three years I cease not to warn everyone day and night with tears. And now brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of His grace which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. I have coveted no man's silver or gold or apparel. Yea, ye yourselves know that my necessities and to them that were with me. I have showed you all things how that uh, so laboring you ought to support the weak and to remember the words of Jesus Christ how that he said it is more blessed to give than to receive. And when he had thus spoken, he kneeled down and prayed with them all. And they all wept sore and fell on Paul's neck and kissed him, sorrowing most of all for the words which he spake, that they should see his face no more. And they accompanied him unto the ship. Having read that, pray the Lord's blessings on that this evening. Now I want to deal with a thought this, this evening on the, the joy of giving. A lot of folks has a problem when it comes to giving. It, it's uh, to get it out of their hand. They they have a they have a reluctance, a resistance in giving. If folks ever learns what giving really is and what it does, it becomes much easier. The Lord tells us in many different passages when He speaks of giving. One of the places He speaks to us about. Giving, he says, Give, and it shall be given you. Uh, shaking to get pressed down, shaking to get, running over. Now that's if you give. So I wonder if a lot of folks' buckets ain't running over because they're not giving the way God has impressed upon them to give. And we ought to, we ought to be much about giving. So when you look at what Paul here is saying to him, he says to this this Church of Ephesus says you, you need to be in this matter of giving as Jesus was. And remember what he said, it's more blessed to give than it is to receive. Amen. Now, Jesus was right in everything he said. And he said it's more blessed to give than it is to receive. A lot of folks are about the receiving side of things. What can I give? What's coming to me? What gain is there in this for me? You know, if I do this, what do I get back? That's not a given heart. That's a receiver's heart. You're giving to get back, like, like investing money in things. Most folks that invest money don't invest money just to put their money there. They, they are looking for a greater gain. If they put in a dollar, they're looking to get ten dollars back. That's what investing is. You put it in a stock, and you watch and wait for that stock to be able to go forth and produce. Somebody else uses it in a marketing field and it, it grows. They use it and it grows and it grows and grows. The stock goes up, the share brother goes up, and your money comes back bigger than it went out. That's why folks invest. There's a danger in that. As I told you here a few weeks back, uh, we know some folks that there was a hundred and thirty five thousand dollars lost in a year's time in the stock market that's a big loss now the thing you need to understand in god's work you never ever lose when you invest with the heart in god's work because god is the rewarder of them that 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 give and those that seek him uh, diligently god's going to reward you you may not get it all on this side, but you don't want it all on this side. Because on this side, 
the thieves, rust, malt, and all these other things will come and corrupt it. So you want some things laid up in heaven so that when you go to heaven, you've got some rewards and treasures over there. Amen. The Lord taught us much about that. When you look at Paul here and he talks about this matter of giving, you see in verse number 19, he speaks about his humility. That's his manners that he has. That's the right manners to have. We need to stay humble. Amen. Uh, the 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 better than thou attitude has killed a lot of churches. The 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 arrogancy of I can do it better than you can has killed a lot of churches. Uh, we need that. We need to be like Paul. Now, when Paul walked in the room, there's not many people that could stand up with him uh, when you compare credentials. Paul was a very learned man. He was a very wise man. He had done a lot of schooling, so to speak, and had had uh, uh, a lot of credentials. So when he walked in the, in the midst of folks, he had a lot to bring to the table. But he didn't act that way. He says here, he come in verse number 19, he comes forth with a spirit of humility. That's the manners that he had. His motive was the tears, the broken heart. He was... He was heartbroken for this people. He wanted to see them grow and go forward for the glory of God. That should be our heart. The purpose and the means of our giving, our motivation and our giving rather, should be that it's to help the, the forwarding of the church. Amen. Amen. That we can reach more here, we can reach more there, we can do more in missions, we can do more with the children, we can do, and all of that is to see folks get saved. Amen. Listen, a, a, a festivity out here to let the kids come and play and have a good time is to reward them and give them a good time, but it's also to befriend them and show them that we care and we're willing to invest in them because we love them. We want to see them born again. Amen. 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 And those those things of investments, that's boy, it returns when you invest in the things of the Lord. This should be an encouragement. You're a giver, it ought to encourage you. So if you saw up, you probably ain't giving good. Amen. Amen. I need to repeat that. If you're giving good, this ought to be an encouragement to you. But if you're not, and you saw up, you probably ain't giving like you're supposed to. Amen. Amen. I, I don't know. I, I'm going what Preacher Joe told me. He said if you throw a rock amongst a pack of dogs, the one that yep, so one got hit. <laughs> Y'all figure that out. If you can't, uh, I'll help you out with it a little while. Anyway, you see his manners in verse 19, the humility, you see his motivation, the tears, his heart for these people. You see there was malicious attacks against him. He was serving the Lord with all of his heart, doing all that he could, and he still got malicious attacks, that temptation that come against him. He's actually going in bondage because of his preaching. That's pretty, that's pretty bad stuff. And then you see his message. He says in verse 20, he says, I kept back nothing that was profitable for you. Boy, I tell you, that, boy, wouldn't we have, wouldn't we have it then if everybody, and I ain't talking about your gold and silver, but if we kept back nothing and give our all to the work of God and to the will of God, my soul, what a church we'd have. Amen. 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 If everybody come in here Sunday morning and obeyed God 100%, the Spirit of God would have most liberty and you'd see more folks getting saved. You'd see more folks surrendering to the Word of God. Amen. It takes the power of God to do that work. Amen. Amen. So, you see Paul here, he's, he's trying to help folks. We're not, we're not, we don't preach to be mean. We don't teach to show our knowledge. We're doing it for the purpose of edifying and building up the church. Amen. 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 Paul enlightened them concerning the wolves that would be coming in. Paul exhorted the leaders to feed the flock of God. What's he saying? He's saying, get over and study and get something from God to give God's people. Feed them, feed them, feed them. They gotta be eaten. They gotta be eaten, so we gotta have strength. Now, one thing I want to point out in, in all of this much introduction. This is Paul's last words to the church of Ephesus. <laughs> this is the last words that the Apostle Paul gets to share with the church of Ephesus. Now we we could go around the room tonight and probably uh, probably most of us 
has been to the bedside of one of our dearest loved ones and we still today hang on to their last words. Last words means a lot to us. Usually the last words of a dying person is the truest of their words. Amen. <coughs> they know they're fixing to meet God regardless of what kind of life they've had behind them. They know they're fixing to meet God and they want to be true in their last. We value who's talking, but we also hold a strong value on when it's their last words. There was a man that saw a group of folks gathered in the street. He thought to himself that this was a gospel preaching meeting, so he drew closer. He was curious to what was going on, and he got close as he could. As he approached, he realized it wasn't preaching, but it was a man shouting about the values of vitamins. <laughs> He saw a small frame feller that was not very attractive. And he thought to himself, if he uses vitamins, I don't want any. <laughs> the value of the speaker carries a lot in what we're listening to. Amen? God help me. Amen. Amen. Paul is a very valuable speaker. And when he says things to us, we need to listen. God's touched him and used him in a great way. So when we go into looking at this matter of giving, a uh, person that has great value or, or a very influential person uh, makes very large impacts in our lives. I quote and say things, different slogans uh, from Preacher Joe because Preacher Joe made a huge impact in my life. Big part of why I'm standing where I stand today. He helped and trained and worked with me and done the best he could with what he had to work with. Amen. Thank you. you think about uh, what folks say. We, we, take, we take those last words very, very close to heart. Turn with me over to the book of Chronicles. First Chronicles, if you would, tonight. Page 489 in the Schofield, if you're looking for that. 1 Chronicles 29. I'm going to start at the first of the chapter in just a moment. Let me read the last of it. Now this, now the acts of David, the king, first and last, behold, they are written in the book of Samuel, uh, the seer, the book of Nathan, the prophet, and the book of Gad, the seer, with all his reign and his might and the times that went over him and over Israel and all the kingdom of the country. This is the last of David's words and works that we're going to read here in just a moment. Uh, verse 28 says, And he died in a good old age. When you look at the first part of Chronicles 29, David is addressing the congregation of Israel. David is talking to them concerning the building of the temple. If you recall, David wanted to build the temple himself, and God said, No, you can't do that. Thy, thy hands are defiled. You got bloody hands. Remember David in his affair with Bathsheba? He had her husband Uriah the Hittite killed, put him in the forefront of the Bible, and left him there to be killed. He's as guilty of, of pulling the triggers if he pulled it himself. Amen. Uriah the Hittite. Bloody hands. He's got bloody hands all about things that he did in his life there. And God said, you're not building my temple. But your son will build it. And Solomon, his son, is, is the one that's coming forth that will build this temple. Solomon being the child of Bathsheba. That gives you proof God forgives sin. God forgave David. God forgave Bathsheba. And of Bathsheba comes Solomon, the king's son that will sit on the throne. As we read this story in 1 Chronicles 29, Solomon's going to take the throne. Watch David as he talks here. He says, Furthermore, David, the king said unto all the congregation, Solomon, my son, whom God alone hath chosen, is yet young and tender, and the work is great. And the palace is not for man, but for the Lord God. This tabernacle here is not for man. It's for God. Mm -hmm. 
we come to His house to worship Him. Yes. May God help us to always remember this is His house. Amen. It's all about Him. So, verse 2 says, Now I prepared with all my might for the house of my God the gold for things to be made of gold, the silver for the things to be made of silver, and the brass for the things of brass, and iron for the things of iron, wood for the things of wood, onyx for stone, or onyx stones and stone to be set, glistering stones, and divers' closet, colors, and all manner of precious stones, and marble stones in abundance. Moreover, because I have set my affection to the house of my God. I want to stress right there, David's David's affections, David's calls, all of David's might is going into the work of the house of God because of his affections for the house of God. When we are heart affected to the house of God, it becomes priority. A lot of folks aren't faithful. A lot of folks aren't fruitful at the house of God because their affections is not set on the house of God. Lord help us. Amen? Amen. He goes on talks about the different talents and all that He's given there and what He's doing. <clears throat> Verse 5, He talks about uh, those those folks that will uh, work. He, he says, For all manner of work to be made by the hands of the artificers, uh, and who then is willing to consecrate His service this day to the Lord. That's that's the important part. What is consecration? Consecration is to set apart, to declare to be sacred. What David is saying to this people before him is, hey, you need to set yourself apart to be sacred, to be holy, to be dedicated, to be devoted to the house of God that we're going to be with. <coughs> it's necessary for the building of the house of the Lord. Now, I will show you in a few verses down through here that they will rejoice in verse number 9. Well, let me, let me read on down verse, verse 6. It says, Then the chief of the fathers and the princes of the tribes of Israel and the captains of thousands of hundreds and the rulers of the king's work offered willingly and gave for the service of the house of God of gold 5,000 talents and 10,000 drams and of silver 10,000 talents and of brass, 8,000 talents and 100,000 talents of iron. And they with whom the precious stones were found gave them to the treasure of the house of the Lord by the hand of Jehiel the Jeshonite. And the people rejoiced for they offered willingly because with perfect heart they offered willingly to the Lord and David the king also rejoiced with great joy. <clears throat> now David's happy. David's joyful. Not only in his giving, but they were giving. And it's not just that they were giving, it was the manner that they were giving. He wasn't having to pull it from them. He wasn't having to probe them to give it. He just made the statement, here's what we got to do, here's what we need to do. And they willingly offered their sacrifices. How do we give? One, we give liberally. You look at verse number seven, you see that they're given liberally. That's the only permission for being liberal that you get here at Tabernacle. We're not going to be liberals and everything else, but we can be liberal in our giving. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> Matthew 10 and 8 closes out that verse with saying, Freely have you received. Freely give. Paul gave liberally because Jesus taught him with his life to give liberally. He teaches here in verse number 8, he talked about how that they was given uh, sacrificially. They gave those precious stones sacrificially. We was in a meeting years ago and God was working and doing. There was there was a need for some funds to be raised up. Folks were giving, and I watched some folks give very precious things. I'm not talking about pulling dollars out of their pocket. They was folks that laid down watches on the altar and said, "Sell it, get whatever you get out of it, give it to the church." There was folks that took off rings and laid it in an offering pad and said, 
take these rings and sell them for whatever and give that to the church. They was folks that done great giving to the church. They was trying to help it get going. See, when, when that when that church has your affections, it doesn't hurt to give. You don't have to strain and wonder what to write down on that page on that check that you write for the church or the money that you dig out of the envelope or out from under the mattress or whatever you do. It doesn't it doesn't hurt. Now y'all know I'm not here begging for money. We done got the money we need to do what we're gonna do, right? So I'm not here begging for money. But if you're gonna be joyful, you're gonna have to learn to give right. That's where joy comes in. I'm I'm thankful when I have the opportunity to give. Amen. It's amazing how God, and we shouldn't be amazed because we watched Him do great things for many years. Amen. But it's just amazing how God provides the things you need before you need it. Amen. Amen. I had a need here in the last little bit. I'm not going to get detailed on it because you'll figure out what I'm talking about. I don't want you to know what I'm talking about. I just want you to know I'm telling you the truth. Before the need ever hit the table... God had already gave me the exact money that was necessary to take care of that need. Somebody handed me exactly what was necessary to take care of a need that was not for me, it was for others. Ain't it amazing how good God can do things and how how He can do it from when you ain't looking for it and you ain't asking for it and you ain't talking about it, it just sort of shows up. It's amazing what God can do. And He blessed me because God gave to me from somebody else. And I was able to give to somebody else because God gave to me. So that giver, the main giver, got a big double blessing because they got a blessing because I got gave to. And they got a blessing because it was given to somebody else. That money just kept on giving. Ain't that good? Y'all don't want to store up a bunch of money, do you? I know one church, God bless them, uh, stored up a pile of money and what good did it do? You know, wouldn't it be awful for us for a rapture to take place and us have $400,000 of money? Why in the world would we want to live? Now, I ain't talking about being, being about said the other word, didn't I? Uh, S-T-U-P, S-T-U-P-I-D. <coughs> I ain't supposed to say that, so I didn't say that. <laughs> but I was about to be. I, I, I mean, wouldn't it just be absolutely foolish to leave a pile of money behind for the Antichrist? Amen. Now, there's nothing wrong with paying the bills and having money to take care of necessities. I'm not saying that in no way. But, we don't want to just be storing up a bunch of money just to be laying up there. There's missionaries that need to get to the field. Y'all do believe the rapture is going to take place soon, don't you? Amen. Amen. We need to be about that giving. We need to get it, get them fellas on the field as much as we can. So, Paul, Paul, and again over here in Chronicles, David is talking about the liberal giving. He talks about the sacrificial giving, things that's precious. If you don't ever give something that's precious to you, you're not really giving. I'm just letting that settle. Amen. That's, that's where real giving comes in. When you've got to give, it's a sacrificial gift. But he talked about it in verse number 9. He said the people gave... Verse 7 and 8, he said, but then in verse number 9, they're rejoicing. They're happy about being able to give. They're putting up the tabernacle where they can go in, the temple where they can go in and worship God. Give Him the honor and the glory and sing the praises to Him that He deserves. They're they're rejoicing that they get to do that. Man, it's joyful. Every man... According as he has purposed in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly, or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. We read that sometimes so quick, we don't pay no attention to what we just read. God loveth a cheerful giver. You want to make God happy? Be a good cheerful giver. Amen? Amen. He talks about in verse 9 there about how they offered willingly. Isn't that wonderful? Twice in that one verse there talked about willingly giving. Willing. Y'all, y'all not have to be forced or fussed at to give. Now listen to me. I'm going to tell you something that you need to get a hold of. Your tithe is not giving. Amen. Many folk think 
that when they put their tithes in the offering plate, that that's their giving. That is not giving. Nope. That belongs to the Lord already. Amen. You already owe that to the Lord. As soon as you receive a paycheck or an income or, or a extra however it comes in, you already owe a tenth of that to the Lord. That's not giving. That's paying your dues. Right. Amen. I don't know what the tax rate is now. It depresses me to think about it, but it's up there. And uh, when you make a dollar, they automatically got a tax that goes on it, right? Amen. And the tax people tells you that ain't your money, that's our money. Right? right? Yep. Well, you know God's first. Amen. So you ought to, you ought to give God His tithe. Amen. Amen. Now, I've not done it. It cost me back yonder. I'm telling you, it cost you. And uh, I, I don't want to get in no trouble with God over, over keeping His money. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't <coughs> like carrying other people's money around. I, I don't want to carry other folks' money around. I, I, I just, you know, I don't want to be responsible for it. And when I got God's money in my pocket, it makes me a little nervous. Matter of fact, I write my check out before she writes my check out. I pay my tithes before my tithes actually hits my pocket. How about that? That way you don't get in no trouble. Amen. Amen. This this matter of giving, this matter of giving ought to be. Joyfully and willfully, uh, not not making it have to be forced, and that's the thing about you know as I mentioned in the beginning there, it read that little illustration to you to start with. Sometimes when you do fundraisers and things like that, they sort of uh, pry and prod the money out of folks. I've been in I've been in meetings where they stood up there and took offering for two hours. Honest, I have. And and I gave what I was supposed to give, what what felt like I was supposed to do when it when it started. I didn't wait till an hour and fifty nine minutes later. They didn't have to probe and prod and beg and plead for me to give. Amen. 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 Uh, but some folks, boy, you got to, <clears throat> got to get a big crowbar and pry that out of their hand. Well, now what what blessing? Now good that the church got it because they needed it. But what blessing was it to the giver? If they, that's grudging. Amen. Remember Paul and what he did. He was a humble man. Verse fourteen here, or uh, what Paul was saying, he had a humble heart. Look at verse fourteen in, in, in Chronicles twenty nine. He says, "But who am I, and what is my people that we should be able to offer so willingly after this sort?" For all things come of thee, and of thine own have we given thee. What he's saying, folks, is you wouldn't have it if God hadn't have given it to you. Amen. You wouldn't have it to start with to be able to give. Amen. I wouldn't have a tithe if I hadn't got an income. Amen. So God doesn't gave it to you. And, and a lot of folks will grit, grit, grunt and groan and fuss about only getting their 90%. Hey, y'all remember that folks named J.C. Penney? Y'all remember that? Very, very profitable business. You know what his tithe was? Anybody know? 90%. 90% tithe and he took home 10%. Right. That's why God blessed J.C. Penney so much. And J.C. Penney was known for being the Christian's clothing store. Why? Because he kept things in a modest way. J.C. Penney built a village. I've been in the village myself. I've been in the village down somewhere around Melbourne, Florida, down below Jacksonville. He built a village for preachers that didn't have a retirement plan or didn't have a retirement home or somewhere to go when they retired out from preaching. They need somewhere to live. They had a village to live in free. Amen. You wonder why God blessed them so much. Now you want to know why it's folded up? Because they turned and started supporting same-sex marriages. Right. Hey Amen. You go look at it, and I can show you when there's... You go look at... You go look at when they started supporting the same-sex marriages and look at when their stocks failed, and you're going to be able to line them two up. Amen. I got somebody very close to me uh, that had, had a lot of stock in that. Lost a lot of money because of that. Amen. Amen. Hey, if you don't believe me, ask Target. Yeah. Amen. 
They're going through it right now. Amen. Ask Boy Light. <laughs> they was losing a billion dollars a day because they were supporting the transgender stuff. Oh, a lot of them doing the same thing. Oh, wow. Yeah, they're going down the hill on that. When I worked out there, they supported the gay. Well, they done that after Hedrick left, and I can tell you that. <laughs> We know the folks that started that out out there. But this this matter of giving. Give liberally, verse 7. Give sacrificially, verse 8. Give joyfully, verse 9. Willingly, verse 9. And humbly, verse 14. Who are we? Are we just servants? Just just little old common folk? God sends in blessings so he, we can send it out and then he'll bless us back for it. Amen. Isn't that a pretty good way to work? Amen. God's good about the way He does His blessing. His blessing is big. I, I, I hope I never forget. Preacher was telling uh, one time about a little fellow giving to God, and uh, somebody said something about how much he was giving. And he said, "Well, God's silver is bigger than mine." Right. Amen. You think about it. If I give a dime that God tells me to give Him a dime, God usually sends back a dollar. That's pretty good. Amen. Pretty good return, isn't it? Amen. Plus, you give, and like we give them to these missionaries and helping them, and, and somebody gets born again, we get a part of that. We've got, we've got rewards with that. Amen. Amen. When you give to God, the results in giving, it pleases God. It, it gives us God's provision. When we're giving like we're supposed to to God, now tithe. Remember, tithe is already His. So if you don't give it, you know you're gonna get you're gonna get chastened for that. Amen. A lot of folks get in trouble because they don't give right. Yeah. They have a lot of trouble financially because they're not giving right. Amen. 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 It, it'll 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 get a hold of you in a hurry, especially if you're a child of God. I really think that lost folk ought to give, tithing wise. Amen. God gave them what they had. They're supposed to tithe off of it. Amen. I think all the folks of the land should tithe. Amen. That's just my my two cents worth. But we get we get God's pleased in our giving. God gives us provisions and protections when we give. It's it's amazing what all the Lord does. Let me give you this now, quick. To check out our giving, to use a gauge about our giving, to use a rule of thumb for our giving, to look for an example about our giving, let's look to the giver. Let's, let's look at what Jesus gave. Galatians 1, 4, He gave Him home self for our sins. Amen. So when we give more than that, then we can say we've really, we've really reached out there, right? Amen. He's given us heaven. John 14, 1. said, I go to prepare a place for you that where I am there you may be also I can't give out that kind of gift. See, when you look at Jesus, He gave us gave it, it all to us. Amen. We become heirs with Christ Jesus. Amen. All of heaven, I'm not a part of that. Amen. I'm, I'm a joint heir with Jesus. Amen. 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 That excites me. He gave so that I can. He asked us to give, but He never asked us to give more than He gave. Amen. You know, He doesn't ask us to give our life in death for Him. He asked for us to give our life in living for Him. Amen. I beseech you, therefore, brother, and by the mercy of God, that you present your body as a living sacrifice. He's not asking us to die for Him. He's asking us to live for Him. There's joy in giving. When you get a hold of that, you're, you're, you're excited. You're happy. Because, I mean, see, in giving, you get part of these folks getting saved. By the way, I used the church van, the church gas, to go up and pick up them kids the last few Sundays. Do you give? You got a part of it. Titus got saved Sunday morning. That young fellow last week made a profession. Us giving, we got a part of that. Amen. 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 I, you know, I, I've never tried to take credit for somebody getting saved. Because I don't know who's been praying for them. I don't know who's been witnessing to them. I, I, you know, who brought them to church to start with. I mean, 
All I do is, is say, here's what God said. All I'm doing is sharing the message. It's just it's just sharing the message. Hey, here, Jesus loves you. This I know. For the Bible tells me so. Mm-hmm. And whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's all I do is give them the gospel. Amen. I'm just giving them his message. And they get born again, and he lets me be part of that. He lets me enjoy a reward in heaven. For seeing a soul saved on this side. Amen? Amen. What a blessing it is to be part of the Lord's work and to be able to give. Let's pray. Father, love you. Thank you for loving us. Pray you'll take this and work it in our hearts. Help us to realize the joy of giving. Lord, uh, to keep giving. Not just the cash or the coins or that kind of stuff, but Lord of ourselves. For Lord, you bless us much when we give of ourselves to the work of the Lord. And we thank you for helping us in that. Thank you for giving us the privilege. Lord, I, I don't consider it a job. I consider it a privilege to be able to serve you. Do what we can. I pray you'd have your will. Use us, lead us, and guide us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. And we need to take a few prayer requests. Uh, I do want to give some updates. Pray for Monty Lear, uh, Jack and Gail's son, Monty. He's, uh, he's got something in the family of heart issues going on. Blood pressure and, and chest pains and different things. They don't have a, a clear diagnosis yet. So lift him up to the Lord in prayer that God would help them to get a diagnosis. Know where the problem is to be able to get it fixed. Uh, he's, having, he's having some problems uh, with his blood pressure and pain. So pray to get that figured out. I don't know who all he's going to or what they're doing, but I talked with him a little while today and uh, encouraged him some there. And then I know also Jack and Gail and the family's got another request. Aside from that, that I uh, ask you to be uh, prayerful about. Uh, it's an unspoken, but I ask you to be prayerful about that Lord, we're touching and uh, move greatly in that situation. God knows all about it. Uh, Continue to pray for Miss Brittany. I mentioned that before service. Uh, continue to lift her up in prayer that her body will settle down, get right, whatever's going on with her, uh, where she can get to work. Uh, pray about her living conditions that the Lord will work out uh, what He see fit for that for the time being. They're going to be with us. Uh, so just pray the Lord would work it out, whatever it needs to be uh, for her. I don't care. I got my little corner and that's all I need. So they can do whatever they want to do the rest of it. Uh, we've, we've, we've lived in different settings throughout our lives. So it's not a big thing to me. We're living in a mansion compared to what some people live in. Right. Uh, I can't say his name right, but Brother Prakash, I believe, is the way they said it. Uh, that's over in India. Uh, they got 10 folks in a 10 square, 10 foot square room. You just got barely a place to lay yourself down there. So, you live in a mansion. I'm not complaining. Thank God for it. Amen. Amen. Just pray the Lord's will there. Remember her. Uh, lift her up in prayer. Pray, pray for the kids. Pray for all the children. Uh, next week, be graduating. Uh, some going to high school. Some coming out of high school. And uh, they need much prayer. They need direction. Which way God would have them to go with their lives. Uh, we need we need to be praying for these young folk. They need to be more than surrendered to the work and the will of God rather than looking for cash. Right. That's why they need to be taught in Sunday school and they need to be taught in church. We've got to get them in here so they can hear. Hey, there's a joy in giving. They need to know that. Mm-hmm. Give them themselves to the Lord and God can give them joy in their heart. Hey, listen, when everything else goes to, to, to a mess, you can pillar your head and know that you gave yourself and done something for Jesus. Amen? Amen. What a blessing. Amen. Yes, sir. <clears throat> you were talking about giving. And um, it probably just come to my mind. Uh, you know, you got one person. God is waiting on the right person to hear the word. And that has been when the church rapture died out of here. If you ain't given, if you want to get out of this place, give so the missionaries can get there and tell that last person. Yes, so sir. The Lord can come by. Amen. Get us out of this place. Amen. Amen. All right. Anyone else got a request? Yes, ma'am. Uh, 
you remember Barbara and Raymond Devaney. Raymond had to have a feeding. He put in. He put in for four months, and then they accepted him. It's not no better to have to have it for us. Oh, I remember the Devaney family there. He was in a wheelchair. Dad died of And just, just remember that. Amen. Praise the Lord to have that family there. The Devaney's. All right. Anyone else got a request to say? Yes, ma'am. Uh, Peggy's gr- uh, great grandson, Waylon, the mm-hmm. one we've been had the sur- heart surgery. He goes in tomorrow um, to put in more stents. And if they find out that the stents that they put in at the first surgery uh, has gotten too or got it's gotten too big or small or whatever, uh, they may have to do again open heart surgery tomorrow. So just pray that. They don't have to do that right now because it's another uh, two months, I think, or three months before he has to have another open heart surgery. So just mm-hmm. just pray that everything is good when they go in. Amen. They're really they're really the doctors are amazed at how well he's doing. I mean, he's four months old and uh, his uh, they was not they was worried about his oxygen level. It is absolutely perfect mm-hmm. almost. So good. good. Just, well, that just sounds good. That. Hopefully, they won't have to do any stent work there. Yeah. All right. Pray for that young man. Yes, ma'am. Chris was um, had a baby um, five days ago, I guess. Yes, ma'am. And um, the baby has had to stay at the hospital. Something's happened, and she just asked God to give her strength. So I don't know what has taken place, but just pray for, for her and the baby. All right, remember Miss Crystal Blank and Chip and the baby. And the nurses and all that. All the doctors and staff that's working with that situation. Don't know all the details, so just remember mm-hmm. that. Anyone else got a request to see me? Yes, Miss Kay? Fun spoken that the Lord knows about. And remember you and Miss Judy and all of our leaders and Israel and the Jews and the children and the church and a lot of others, I think. I think my mom would not be here by the while. All right. Miss Donna? Remember, Mary and Chris will be traveling next week. Yes, sir. Miss Scales says that Corey's going to have surgery on his leg again. Okay. All right. <laughs> Remember, Corey, pray the Lord touch and help with his leg. He's having some issues with his. Legs, so pray, pray about that. Hope it don't give any more <coughs> troubles there. Yes, ma'am. Um, that's pray for Sandra as she goes back. It's been good to have her. Amen. 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 Um, all things. Yeah, yeah something else I remember about it. God knows what it is, so pray about that on the well, I just want to uh, do a, a praise because both of my children flew this past weekend, one to California, one to Las Vegas. They got back home safely, and I just praise God. Amen. He's with Amen. 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 You don't ever know. Mr. Job said, Lord said, Lo, I'll be with you always. So he's not interested in flying. <laughs> <laughs> he flew up last year, though. <laughs> he took that good flight. Remember the widows, widowers? We need to remember them. They go through a lot of tough times. Uh, so remember many of those we have in our midst and, uh, and connected with our church, Miss Locker, Miss Dellinger. Remember those folks lift them up to the Lord. Our list has had a little bit of relief, so continue to pray that it'll clear on out of there. I don't know, most, uh, some of you on Facebook and you saw that little speck mm-hmm. that uh, we had a key. <laughs> it's bad, it hurts bad, but it's just a little speck. It's hard to believe that something that small could cause that great of a pain. But uh, she has passed some fragments, so hopefully it's breaking up and coming out. So just continue to pray for Miss Alyssa as she gets through these kidney stones and God's grace with Clarence. Amen. Amen. <laughs> <laughs>
Amen. All right. Anyone else got a request to see? Yes, ma'am. Uh, I have several unspoken. Uh, remember Brianna and Misty and the family there. <coughs> and continue to pray for me as I try to heal. Amen. Amen. You're on the healing now. <laughs> yes, Praise the Lord. Uh, she's looking much better. Thank the Lord for that. She's had a rough go with this one. Uh, but uh, we praise the Lord. She's doing much better. Amen. So remember, Misty and Bree and those. Lord, touching them to meet their needs. Pray for Jerome's family. Pray for Brother Jerome's family. They had the funeral service today. Uh, pray that uh, Miss Ruth can get the comfort and grace that she needs. And, uh, <laughs> Be tough for a little while. She, I went to the funeral and talked to Jerome with a new friend of mine. Yes, sir. And uh, I've been to a lot of funerals, but I've never seen the wife get up and talk during the funeral. And she got up and told a, a, a lot about what Jerome was doing and while they were together and all this. And, it, was, it just amazed me how they were so confident, and I think Ronnie Moore, uh, I was talking to him the other night, and I think he summed up uh, that situation as good as anybody could. He said, I believe Jerome Bush is in heaven as much as I believe I'm going there. Amen. And I, I thought that was a good sum yeah. up. What yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, here was his last singing. I don't know if you all know that, but knew that, but uh, this was his last singing. And uh, so I was talking with Ronnie. I said, you know, it's it was obvious he had a touch of God on him. It's just, it was obvious. Uh, I've been around it enough to uh, thank God, recognize God's touch, and he sure enough had God's touch on him. And uh, we had a great revival, so praise the Lord for that. All right. Anyone else got a request tonight before we dismiss? Remember Sunday? Pray about it. Pray for some youngins, some middle agers, and we can take older folk. They won't come. Amen. It's mighty nice, Yeah, it's mighty nice. Amen. Well, you ain't old to you about 95, so we'll, That's right. we'll take That's wherever we get. Age. Amen. Uncle Carl's 99 and living by himself and doing well to the. Uh, he slipped and fell between the, the bed and his little rascal, that little chair he run around on, and he got a mild heart attack and went down the hill from there. So, But he's 99, doing well. Amen. Anyone else? Yes, ma'am. First, I just want to thank the church and thank the Lord for, um, for that Thursday and the doctor said everything looked good. Then I went today and all my blood work and everything was good. I was worried about my liver and he said there's no need to worry about that. Everything was good. And I just want to thank God. Amen. Thank you for your prayers. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Now she get back to work, we'd all be happy, Amen. <laughs> she got another few weeks. What was it? July 12, I think she goes or June 12th. Which was it? I know June 12th. June 12th, she goes back to the bed. <laughs> <laughs> Get her second rabies shot. <laughs> yeah, she'll go back then, and then, then maybe she'll be able to do a little more. Right now, she's still on a limited uh, up to 20 pounds, so that's tough to do. Uh, anywhere from 10 to 20 is tough, because <laughs> you grab up something before you know it. And... Uh, Thank the Lord she was able to get play set up before she had surgery. She started not picking him up weeks and weeks before surgery. So uh, he's given he's give a, a good little help and, and not been a problem. But he's a he's, he's good little helper. He's a redhead. God help him, but uh, he's been a good helper part of the time. Uh, he's a young man. God bless him. He's a white. I can promise you that. He's all white. Bless his heart. Get him quick, Jesus. Get him quick. That's all I can say. Amen. All right. Anything else before we pray and go? 
Nothing else on there. Remember Nikki always. Uh, continue to lift her up, Lord, in prayer. They're they're working some medications and doing some things, and uh, she may get to get out in public a little bit. So uh, pray about that. Uh, we're still hot. Yeah. But uh, 